A special thanks to Hyundai SM Raja for allowing me to film this car and information is provided in the description box below. Hello there, this is a full in-depth tour review of the 2022 Hyundai Santa Fe 2.2D in signature trim showing exterior, engine and interior. Here are the keys, keyless tight. This has auto power foldable side door mirrors, lock the car. Side door mirrors fold in, unlock the car, side door mirrors fold out. Remote engine start feature, lock the car, and press and fold on this button. Let's turn it off because we're inside the building. The exterior colour is Glacier White Metallic. This has keyless entry features and the car is unlocked. To lock it, press on this button. To lock it, press on this button again. Welcoming the side lights and the door handles. Black leather seats with white piping on the sides. Three spoke low wrap multifunctional steering wheel. There is grey stitching on the inner rim. For transmission, the Santa Fe comes with an 8 speed automatic transmission controlled by these four buttons P, R, N, D. In drive, you can use the power shifters on the steering wheel. When placed the car in reverse, there is a reversing camera along with the surround view cameras. This is the surround view camera here. Button for the front and rear parking sensors, drive mode selection is down assist. The whole old hold feature for the electronic parking brake, drive mode selection. As you flick an indicator, there are side view cameras. Electronic parking brake to engage it, simply pull on this lever. To disengage it, put the foot on the brake and push it. Now let's take a look at the exterior. Long spot warning system there along with the side view camera. For the wheels, this has 18 inch dual 25 spur alloy rims wrapped in. Chromo 23560R181070 tires. Named after a city in US state New Mexico, this is not a geography lesson. We refer to a Hyundai model. The Hyundai Santa Fe was the brand's first homemade SUV introduced in 2000 and has seen four generations. The fourth generation, featured in this video, started sales in the summer of 2018. In June 2020, the Santa Fe TM received an emergency facelift for the 2021 model year, which includes new headlights with T shaped LED DRLs, new grille, new bumpers new low side panels, new wheels, a new LED rear light bar, new low reflector light strip, a new interior of floating design with an additional 14 letters of storage space, a new drive mode selected to control all wheel drive system if equipped, the gearbox has been replaced by 4 buttons to control auto gearbox, new touchscreen graphics, updated digital instrument dials for driver, the welcome of additional features for interior and safety, new interior materials for dashboard and driver's installation, and the platform switch. 
Speaking of platform, the Santa Fe TM was based on the Y6 platform before facelift. When facelifted, the Santa Fe switched to an NV platform which mainly allows it to be powered by electrified engines. It mainly underpins the Kia Sorento. The Hyundai Santa Fe TM made its Indonesian debut in the second half of 2018 with three trims, XG, GLS and Guan Santa Fe. The facelifted Santa Fe TM debuted here in April 2021 with current trims are Style, Prime and Signature Priced from 575.7 million Indo rupees at Hyundai Mimosa the Style trim is only available on special order. For the design one word about the Hyundai Santa Fe is Marmite. You love it or hate it? I like it from all views except the front. For the front, it has split automatic dual LED projector headlights with T-shaped LED DRLs in split form and there is a large silver grille. There are silver and chrome pieces throughout the Santa Fe. For the side, the side profile does not look bad and there is a wraparound chrome piece on side windows. Around the rear, there are LED rear lights with T-shaped pattern connected to a red strip and down below is the reflector strip along with indicators. These are part of the emergency facelift. One thing I dislike is the fake exhaust trim. The Hyundai SUV story began with the Galloper, when Hyundai borrowed parts from Mitsubishi. Before Hyundai made their first SUV by their own formula, the Santa Fe. The Hyundai Santa Fe has earned a global reputation as a quality SUV to carry all types of families. With estimated global car sales of over 5.7 million units by now. On the downside, the Santa Fe's exterior design may be controversial and also expensive in Indonesia. For engines, the Hyundai Santa Fe in Indonesia comes with either petrol or diesel. It is disappointing the Santa Fe is not available here with hybrid electric engines. Under the bonnet is a SmartStream D 2.2 letter inline 4 16 valve dual overhead cam turbocharged diesel engine. This engine has Commonwealth direct injection and is Euro 6 compliant. This engine produces 202 horsepower at 3800 rpm and 441 Nm of torque between 1750 to 2750 rpm. For performance figures, 0 to 100 km per hour or 0 to 62 miles per hour in 9 seconds and a top speed of 205 km per hour or 127 miles per hour. With a 67 litre fuel tank, this Santa Fe has a combined fuel consumption of 6.1 litres per 100 km which means it can last over 1000 km or over 621 miles on a single tank of fuel and this Santa Fe is front wheel drive The front doors have sub materials at the top and middle leather materials there with grey stitching at the bottom hard plastic materials for electric window controls, the driver's side window is automatic in both directions, up and down, window and child lock, central locking, mirror controls, this has power portable side door mirrors, down below is a decent side door pocket with a cup holder, to the right of the steering wheel column, the button to deactivate the traction control, the button for the power tailgate, the lane keeping aid, the electronic parking brake, fuse box, automatic transmission, dual pedals, bonnet release, aluminium Santa Fe door seals. The driver's seat has full power adjustments. 
two way power lumbar, recline, sliding, seat height, seat inclination. The steering wheel has manual tilt and telescopic adjustment. Adjust it using the leaf wheel right there. On the steering wheel, on the white boat is the adaptive cruise control, the two buttons to control the multi-informational display and the lane keeping aid. On the left boat is the audio controls, volume, mute, seat track, voice control, different various media sources, Bluetooth accept with the cloud call, paddle shifters on the steering wheel, light indicator, high beam controls, automatic headlights, the wiper controls, automatic wipers. This has a 12 pipe feet inch digital multi-informational display controlled via these two buttons. There's a lot of safety features. Trip menu, digital speedometer, driving assistance, like I showed you before. Cluster, lights, choose the ambient light colour, doors, convenience units, information menu, tire pressure monitoring system. I think that's it for the instrument cluster. Dual zone automatic climate control, temperature on both sides. Sync with circulation, front and rear defrost, fan speed, AC, AC for the rear, different zones, climate menu, automatic three stages, off button. For infotainment, this has an 8 inch touchscreen which contains options for media, onboard Wi-Fi, and sound is six speakers. On the touchscreen, on the left side, radio, media, star, volume and power knob. On the right, seat track, setup, tuning knob. The three buttons on each side, they are not physical buttons. The touch haptic. Let's test out sound quality. <laughs> The sound quality sounds great, USB music menu, about artwork, song information, backwards or forwards song, play pause, song duration, shuffle repeat, list, turn off the display, read the sources, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Bluetooth Audio, Sound settings. Turn on or off the beat. This is the main menu here, which you can customize. All menus, phone, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, users manual voice memo. I already made a voice memo. Hello there, I'm making the video. Climate menu. Quiet mode. Radio. Media. Setup. In setup, sound settings like I showed you before, device connection, vehicle settings. That's for the climate, display settings, buttons, general, onboard Wi Fi. I think that's it for the touchscreen head unit. The touchscreen is simple to operate. Also, the side buttons 
are not physical buttons, they are touch haptic buttons. Has a light switch. Cup holder storage with the USB input there. There's another cup holder storage. Wireless G charging port. Front center armrest made out of soft material. Open it up. There's a huge storage area. Auto dim rear view mirror. LED front reading lights. These are the controls for the sunroof. Wind deflector. I mean, passenger side grip handle. There's no grip handle for the driver side. Driver side sun visor with vanity mirror. There's a light there. If you forget to close the light, it will show itself so it doesn't drain the battery. To summarize the Hyundai Santa Fe Signature's interior, the interior is a wonderful place to be, especially the two screens. All the controls are simple to operate. There are plenty of storage areas inside. These seats are feel soft and comfortable. There are soft touch materials on the dashboard. Now let's take a look at the rear seats. The rear doors have exactly the same materials as the front doors. Manual rear sunshades. A decent side door pocket for the rear doors. I see if it tries the anchor points in the rear seats. The rear seats do recline and slide. Now let's check out the second row rear seat space. For rear seat space, I'm a short person. I've got a generous amount of leg room and a huge amount of headroom. I believe tall people or six footers would certainly be fine back here in terms of rear seat space. Front seat back pockets on each side. Controls to operate the front left passenger seat. Recline and slide. Rear air vents. Two USB inputs for charging, flat transmission floor, rear centre armrest with two cup holders, rear grip handles with hooks on each side along with a lamp. Now let's check out third row rear seat space. Gain access into the third row rear seats from the left side. Press this button here, just like that. Now for third row rear seat space, I'm a short person. I've got a small amount of leg room and a small amount of head room. I believe tall people and six footers would be fine back here, only for short periods of time. These third row rear seat space, I sit very low in here. These are suitable for young children or smaller individuals. Cup holder and the storage. Rear AC controls. The two buttons to fold down the second row rear seat along with power outlet. Same storage on the other side. Now let's get out of here. The signature trim comes with a smart power tailgate as standard. There's a hands-free feature which involves standing behind the boot door for a few seconds for the boot to automatically open up. The boot space with all seats up is of a decent size. 
if you need extra space, the third row row seats can fold down. The spare tire is located underneath the car. Under this floor, if I can lift it up, there's the cargo cover along with some extra storage with the vehicle jack there. The seats do fall down. Just locate the strap on there. Come on it and push it down. You can press, press these buttons to fold in the second row rear seat space. On either side, there are hooks and tie down point. I like for the third row we seat and boot area. The front passenger seat has power adjustment, the same as the driver's side, except the two-way power lumbar. This has six airbags as standard. Center console storage down below. USB input and a 12 volt power outlet. Exposed bit of storage there. Glove box, which is of a decent size. This is the end of the video now, like this video, comment down below, select subscribe and don't forget to fully turn on the notification bell so you're alerted for an upcoming video.